everybody we are back with a thursday edition of the all arsenal mm. show obviously that is due to the champions league fixture on tuesday um so it just means we've got an extra game to go through which is always a bonus uh so we will kick straight into it with our panel for this evening as always joining me for the co-host role it's liam how are you yeah good evening i'm all good thank you got a little bit of a cold but uh, but i'm all good otherwise powering on <laughs> exactly like you like you have to do basically of course <laughs> and joining us on the rest of the panel tonight we've got bez how are you good thank you Adrian. thanks for having me having me sorry <clears throat> yeah no worries at all we're looking forward to getting you into a bit of a hosting role later in the show this evening <laughs> thank you no pressure <laughs> <laughs> and jonesy how are you yeah all good busy weekend busy week so far but yeah all good still here <laughs> <laughs> good news, good news. And another debut with us tonight. We've got Abby again and welcome to Amy. How are you guys? Hi, we're good, thank you. Yeah, we're good, thanks. We'd, uh, we've been to the beach today, so uh, we've been, uh, <laughs> you know, um, sampling the freezing sea. Yeah. <laughs> Feeling nice yeah, and refreshed. Yeah, with our dog as well. It was the first time uh, down to the water and um, yeah, she's currently asleep next to us. She actually has got though. This bad boy on repping nice. the arsenal. <laughs> yeah. This is why we're winning, by the way, at the moment, because uh, she's been wearing this since the turn of the year, and we've been playing really well. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure she continues for the rest we're of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Ah, uh, lovely. Um, yeah, so what we'll do is we'll kick straight into it this evening. Um, obviously, we haven't had a women's game this weekend to go through, so we're just going to quickly tie off uh, a couple of the international, um, some information on them, looking into the Sunday fixture as well, before we then head straight on into the, the men's game. Um, so we'll start first. Obviously, England had a couple of qualifiers. Didn't do too bad, to be fair. Still well in it. Um, but more importantly, for the Arsenal perspective, we've got Leah Williamson back in the squad, number one, and taking back the captaincy as well. Um, pretty brilliant picture then, the game on Sunday, uh, sorry, Tuesday against uh, the Republic of Ireland, obviously a 2-0 win. Um, but just as, as an Arsenal perspective, uh, I'll come to you first, Liam. What what do you make of her return so far for, for, for us? Um, and the the good news that she's been back in the the England fold as well. Yeah, no, it's positive news. Like as I think I said on on the last show, um, it's always been a bit of a struggle up for us this year with the players coming back from the, um, obviously the crucial ligament injuries, and obviously without a pre season, I think it's made it really hard for us this year. Mm -hmm. So I'm really excited that next year we're going to have players like um, Williams and Mead, um, and hopefully Fib back with a pre season behind them. And I think we'll see a totally different picture next year. But it's obviously really positive that she's back again playing. But also, she's obviously captain in England. So hopefully she's, o she's over the worst now and she can continue to recover and get herself ready for next season. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And there's the same question to you. Did, you. did you watch any of the internationals or did you see that game when she made her return the other day? I switched. I didn't quite watch but I was busy working. So from my I heard, everything's positive. Good to see her back with English shirt, where she belongs, you know, as a captain. Uh, you know, she looks in good spirits and it's good to see her back to old self, you know, which is nice to see again, you know, it's refreshing and I'm happy for her that she, she didn't, you know, back off to say, okay, give me to the end of the season. But at least now she's playing, you know, back to old self, giving that, you know, presence that we need from mm -hmm. her, you know, for England and Arsenal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, and Jonesy, how important do you think that step as well will bring her confidence back into the Arsenal games when she returns. Oh no, big time, wasn't it? Um, she's she hasn't she hasn't looked great. Let's be honest. Since she's come back for us, um, she looked a bit shaky, didn't she? Uh, especially against Chelsea and stuff like that. So it'll only build on her confidence and do well for us. But it's great, isn't it, to see another Arsenal player as England captain. We had Declan Rice a couple of weeks ago, captain England. You know, with a better manager, they might do well. But um, We'll leave, we'll leave Southgate there. But, yeah, no, it's always great to see Arsenal players captain in their own countries, um, especially when they're people like Leah Williamson, who's Arsenal through and through. She bleeds red and white, doesn't she? Yeah, exactly. She's exactly one of us. Um, and I'll come to you girls as well. With, obviously, Leah returning, um, she might get to play in international alongside Lotte Um, 
one, how good is that for an Arsenal perspective to see two <laughs> great players, two gooners playing alongside each other at internationals and also what that could do for us as well? What do you think? Yeah, I think it's great. I think it's great she's back in the fold, back as captain. That'll do the world of good for her confidence. I mean, I watched an interview with her and she said, you know, she comes alive when she puts the England shirt on. And I think that's amazing. Um, I've um, had a cruciate ligament um, replacement and yeah. it's a real grueling process to get back to fitness um, and then to pick up. I think it was a hamstring injury she had, wasn't it? Um, alongside that. So um, the, the mental toughness that it takes to get back just to club level is hard enough. Um, but then to go out and, and captain England again, um, she's stoic in that back line. She's really experienced. I think she's she's 27. Um, you know, she brings a, a world of experience and she, she, you know, she really helps us out and, and you feel a bit safer with her there. Um, to have that link up of the two Gooners at, at international level can only, you know, be a strength for, for us at club level. So I think it's really exciting and, uh, you know, I think she'd be really proud of herself. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a really gross injury. It's and I, think, I think anybody who's, uh, I mean, you know, we we both torn our ACLs, and uh, you you was a little bit more sporty than me, weren't you? Yeah. I, mean, I, I I played half a dozen games of football, and then my my ACL went, and um, I'm, I'm sure it was just God telling me that I should really be playing it. I should be watching it. Uh, but I, I I know how much your legs feel like spaghetti, and you feel like every time you're going to have a tackle. Um, but um, I think it just goes to show what her character and personality is like within that England camp. Um, for the, the captaincy to remain with her um, and for her to be such a, a crucial part, even though she didn't play, you know, the the full match. Um, you know, she, she didn't play the full match in the cup, neither. You know, she's coming back to fitness. But you didn't just tell with her interview that she's got great personality. And um, I think that's what this England team bring brings is personality. And that's why we really enjoy watching them, especially in the tournament. Mm, yeah, exactly. Um, and because I didn't get to talk to you guys after the, the cup final, what did you make of that game um, as a whole? I know it was pretty stressful. <laughs> yeah, pretty stressful yeah. It was, it, 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 it's, it's funny because it was it was like watching Arsenal play. Uh, and <laughs> it's almost like they're, I mean, we, we, uh, 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 Mikel Arteta has those fundamentals, doesn't he? But I think a uh, fundamental that's not spoken about is um, we'll, we'll put you through a cup final and make you feel really nervous. No matter if you're leading by two goals or not, or if you're having to fight for it. Um, yeah, I, I think we should have taken our chances, to be honest. Uh, I thought that Chelsea side uh, didn't live up to expectation. Uh, and we had, we had the firepower there. Um, listen, we won it, so I'm not going to talk about the disappoint. Uh, the, the disappointment <laughs> in it, because we won it. Yeah. And, um, yeah, let's hope that, um, uh, you know, that that the, the strike the striker doesn't bite us um, in the arse. Uh, and you know she's playing for Sweden right now. I'm not going to say it, so name because I can't say it. So I'll absolutely <laughs> destroy it. But <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce it right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> um, so just going back to lots of women, Moy. Um, unbelievable stats this year as well. Um, I think that's. Sorry, that's really small. For progressive passes, 124. For a centre-back, that's pretty damn good. You know, she's starting mm -hmm. to grow into her role now. She's much more stable than she was last season and obviously much more helpful in the attacking sense as well. Um, Liam, what have you made of her improvement over the season so far? Oh, yeah, she stands out to me as probably being the most um, progressive player that's kind of a progress within the team, over, especially over the last 12 months. And obviously where you see her now kind of playing centre-back as well. Um, she's just coming into her own, isn't she? Um, I mean, it had a big influence in the Aston Villa game. Um, got that big goal as well. So that was really nice to see. And um, I, think it, I think it's only going to get better once she gets Williamson beside her. Um, yeah. Game in, game out. Like, she's going to she's gonna have, like the ultimate leader in women's football, basically, next to her to kind of just progress the game even further. So I think, mm. personally, I think, like, for me, she's been, I think she's been our kind of standout this season, if I'm being totally honest here. And um, it's great to see because I think, potentially, as I keep saying, next season we'll be in a much better place, um, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Um, and, Bez, do you think as well that it, she's kind of showing that sometimes you need to give a young player... A a bit of uh, leeway and let her let them come into their own at their own time because 
even myself last season, some mistakes she was making and maybe diving in too soon and defenders were all, uh, the attackers were all over her. Um, but now to see her so much like confident and her presence is pretty up there. Um, do you think it just then goes to show that sometimes we can maybe jump on some of the younger players a little bit too quick and actually they need time to develop and settle within themselves? I think so, yes, because simply because we know she's a gooner, lifelong gooner, like yeah. Leah Williams, and seeing her to grow from, I remember, full of ladies football the last year more than ever before. She seems to grow more like into the stature to grow. Like, look, I play for a big team that is Arsenal, and I'm a fan. It's wonderful to see. I saw in the Tottenham game, which I went to myself, my mates, and I literally saw that she looks very assured. She she might make the odd rash moment, but look, it reminds me of like Gabriel and Saliba moments, you know, like one makes a mistake. Hopefully, you know, they... The ladies see that, look, they do it too. They learn from each other. Now, you know, control our emotions, you know, communicate, you know, link up. Just just keep it steady, you know. From I see with her as well, she, she has that, you know, soft touch, which means she doesn't obstruct the, the how do I say this, the defensive unit without hurting the, the attack. Does that make sense? Which is nice to see. So I'm happy to see it go forward in that sense. And hopefully Leah will give another, you know, lift to say, look, we have two Arsenal ladies who complement each other, but also the both Arsenal fans as well, which is nice to see. Yeah, definitely. And Jonesy, um, I know you've been to a couple of games sort of last season as well. Um, <laughs> so you're, you know what Lotta was maybe <laughs> like some at points last season. Obviously, she wasn't much of a starter. Now she is. Do you think that also has an effect on how much she's been able to grow because she knows that she's going to be starting these games now? Yeah, I think it does. I think most of us probably have played football and you get confidence by playing games. You know, if you're a bit part player, you, your confidence is what shot to shit, basically. Um, so <laughs> playing more games is only going to make her better. To be fair, like, I didn't think she would progress into the role she has done this season. Um, after losing like Raffaele, we were, we were all worried who's going to you know, take that spot. And it looks like, you know, Lottie's going to be up there and her and Leah Williamson together next season they could really put a stamp down in the middle of that defence for us and be great. But it's, it's great to see her doing great things at Arsenal now and stepping in and fulfilling her potential. And long may continue, especially with her and Leah together. It's big, good times ahead, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and Amy, do you think as well that's maybe something that we've learnt this season, but we can definitely put into how strong we could be next year if they are both fit together at the same time? Yeah, I mean, I think um, you've got to put these players out there and let them make mistakes or they're never going to learn. Um, and, you know, football intelligence comes from match play. So, uh, and I do agree that with Leah Williams beside her, I think, you know, she's progressing so well, her confidence is growing. That's only going to get, um, you know, confidence is going to get higher and higher. And I think from that, we'll see her just just keep growing. I think it's it's, it's going to be exciting. I, I think it's interesting that um, Magalias, uh, Gabby Magalias, he... he um, Leah speaks really highly of him um, and I think it's quite telling because I think we all forget that he was a really young guy if I think about as well because these guys can keep going until well, you know, I'm 42 and I can still play centre back <laughs> um, they, these guys can keep still keep going uh, and when they come in really, really young um, they are going to make mistakes. The heads are going to go. I mean, you, you know, when I was 22, could I concentrate longer than 20 minutes on anything? No. You know, and yes, I know they get paid a fortune. And, you know, they should. They get paid concentration and all of this stuff. But you can't take away the fact that they are of a certain generation at that time. And they are going to make mistakes. And I don't think there's any coincidence when Leah talks about um, Gabby in that way. Um, and... You know, I, I think that she um, sees a little bit of that kind of side of our defence in, in her team as well. That kind of that youngness, that immaturity, but that excellence as well when um, they have to show it. And they are showing it this year. I was worried last season, I'm not going to lie. Uh, but uh, um, I am being proven a bit wrong this season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Well, we all take that, don't we? We like to be sort of humbled in a good way that maybe we've said some things before, but we, now we can appreciate how talented, uh, especially Lotta, is for yeah. how she's changed her own game around in such a kind of short space of time. Um, but yeah, just quickly going on to um, obviously the USA as well, while we're on the internationals, uh, another bit of silverware for Emily Fox. Um, it, they won the She Believes Cup. 
which is just, I think, a mini tournament. I think Japan were in it as well for some reason. It was like mm-hmm. Canada, USA, one of the South American teams in Japan. <laughs> um, but she's got a, a winning penalty to uh, obviously win win the cup for them. Um, so Liam, how much of that confidence as well? That's two in about six weeks, if that, as well as the Conti Cup for us. So how important could that be going forward? Yeah, she's had a bloody good six weeks, isn't she? Um, <laughs> when you think about it. Um yeah, no, it's always good. Our players winning stuff. Um, it breeds, it breeds, it breeds confidence, don't it? In terms of a good feel factor, um, and hopefully we can kind of utilise that into next year. Um, and she's experiencing game time in important moments, isn't she? Like finals, and like when we talk about the Conti Cup, we talk about obviously her winning that the, the trophy for America a few months ago, and obviously this now. Um, She's experiencing her moments, which will just give her more experience in terms of moving forwards. And hopefully next year, um, as I keep saying, we'll 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 reap the rewards for that. Um, but yeah, no, nah, but well done to her. And obviously, she's having a fantastic time at the moment. Mm, exactly. Um, so yeah, just going into Sunday's game, um, we're at home <laughs> to Bristol City. Uh, I think it's six forty-five mm. kickoff on Sunday, so we will be able to watch the men's game first straight over the sky and watch that as well. Um, Bears is pretty much at this point of the season where we know the WSL title is gone. Um, but how important do you think it is just to still maintain our level uh, and make sure we get the job done on the night? Mm. Don't get me wrong. The last few weeks have been a bit hit and miss for the ladies. I mean, what I want from them is to finish the season strongly and hopefully Jonas can learn from Arteta look. When you see you need position changing, you need more squad depth, please go for the player. Like she did, he did with Essie Russo. Remember, we tried to buy her. You know, they said no. We got a free transfer. I feel even when they make the transfers, they know, and they make, make them actually on time. You know, as I said already, finish this, this season strong, prepare well for next season. Don't go like, you know, all rash with the decisions. I mean, for me personally, I'll give him one more year, but I just feel late. He's been a bit. I mean, the cup win was great, don't be wrong. I'm not going to be salty about it. But I just feel like in the league itself, you can see something didn't just click. And it's sad to see that. I just want him just be a bit more, I don't know, better with decision-making. You know, rotate the squad a bit more. Give the girls who deserve the opportunity. Let's say the Leah Wisdom is coming in now. Emily Fox is in cloud nine, as we know, as you guys just said. Just give the strongest players, you know, that, that freedom of, of the pitch that actually does to our players, you know, let them dictate the way they want to play without hurting their, their morale, you know. We're not asking much, even for the ladies too, because they're doing well, you know. It's still pressure. The team still feel, feels fresh, sorry. Still feels that we can d- develop. But just please utilise what you have, as well as, you know, some reinforcements will be nice. Mm. Yeah. Good, good thoughts there. Um, obviously, hello to everyone in the chat. Sorry, I missed you out <laughs> at the beginning. Um, just wanted to get stuck straight into the chat. But thanks for everyone to, if you've obviously got any questions or any topics that we've missed or you want to bring up, feel free to chuck a comment in there and we will do our best to, to bring it up. I think we've already discussed Emma Hayes enough on this show. I think we can let her go now. <laughs> um, but Josie, uh, same to you. Is this more of a chance to... Obviously, be professional, get the job done, but maybe to also bring up the the goal difference as well, because that is something minus the points. Obviously, mm. we're behind the two up front at the moment, but also the goal difference is not great this year as well. Do you think it's an opportunity just to sort of maybe bring that level up on the night? Yeah, yeah no, definitely. It's like, even though the league's gone, um, we still got to keep fighting and keep finishing strong. That's where it just breeds the confidence throughout the squad, you know, and keeps us going, ready to start next season. Um, but I'd like to see him experiment with more with Black Stenius and Russo up front. I feel he can do that now um, and not have to worry. We, we've called for it all season and it's worked when it's happened, um, i.e. cup final and stuff when they were both on the pitch. But, yeah, so I don't know. I'm not going to lie. I'm not his biggest fan. You all know that. I've said it in the chat. I've said it here. I'm not going to backtrack on it. I still don't like him. I still don't think he should be there. But, you know what, I'll give him till next season. You know, before I hold any more judgment on him, I just, he just confuses me. He's a very confusing man, right? He's like my missus. I don't know what to make of it half the time. (laughs) (laughs) She's not, she's she's in the kitchen. (laughs) 
I cooked the dinner, she's washing up. But no, um, <laughs> what happens, yeah, it's just, I don't know what you're going to get from him. Every game, you just don't know what team he's going to select, you know. Even if the players are fit and, you know, they've had a good game the previous week, you expect them to be playing and don't. But you know what? I'm still bitter from the Champions League exit and I, I can't let that go. Um, but yeah, I'll give him till next season. But yeah, he, he's got to do something, next season, especially in the league, especially where Emma Hayes going. Um, it's a real big chance for him. Mm, definitely. Um, and Amy, what are your thoughts on on Jonas? Um, obviously, you've not been on the show before, so let us know. Let us know your full thoughts. Um, I agree it's confusing, <laughs> you know. Um, I, he is unpredictable. But I think, um, as you said, with the title going, it is the opportunity for him to try something different now. So we'll see what we get from him. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a massive fan, but I hate to be negative about a coach because, you know, it's, I, I am a coach myself. So, I, I, but yeah, I do, I do find him very confusing. I do find him very unpredictable, and I don't know how that translates into the dressing room for the players themselves. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> um, we got a comment here, so I'll come to you, um, Abby, on this one. Uh, just quickly, thoughts on Daly's international retirement, which was a huge shock to me. I don't know if it was the same for you. Oh, um, and obviously, yeah. also being the number one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was a, that was a huge uh, shock to me. I only saw it today as well when I was uh, uh, flicking through a few things while I was making my notes for the show. I'm very professional. Um, and, uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. She doesn't even look old, does she? Like, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, <laughs> you know, I only expect, like, you know, people that look like us to retire from football. Um, but, no, but, yeah, I, I mean... I think the, I sad, the sad thing about it was is that people watched a player last game and they didn't know. Um, um, and I, and I think that's really sad, and I'm, I'm not sure that's the way I'd want to go out. So I don't know. You know, she must have known. Obviously, she made that decision, and yeah. I think I think that was that that was really sad, really, because I think people would have liked to celebrate them more in that in that last picture. But when your body's done, your body's done. I mean, we 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 walked fourteen thousand miles today along the beach, and, uh, and we were hurting. We were hurting, and, and our dog is not very big at all she's done she's actually i think she's not been there actually yeah she's, she's actually, so listen when you're done you're done aren't you i mean even when like you do an hour in the gym you're done so maybe she just did that much she was like it just hurts too much now and like the players say i mean like hey who said the other day that like, you know i can't remember the last game i didn't play without pain i mean that must be awful yeah, to, to have to live them. your life through that she's but I mean, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm happy to see the back of her in the league. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because she's, uh, she's, she's still playing she's still WSL. Playing. Yeah. Just, is she really? She's not, she's not a retiring bully. I think she, she's no. probably just made the decision that in order to, in order to give Big her, mistake. <laughs> huge. Huge. Big I, mistake. I think she's probably thought, I'm going to retire internationally so I can finish the... You know the WSL. Oh yeah, she'll absolutely yeah. spank us then, won't she? Won't she? Yeah. She'll have all this energy coming out of nowhere. She's not doing international matches. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> um, and just the last bit as well with um, all I can think of really is Alessia Russo up front now. Um, as a, I can't think of anyone else that's going to come in just yet, or as even hey. part of the striker world for England. Um, yeah. but do you think that will put maybe some extra pressure on her, knowing that every single game she's going to be playing, or she'll relish that? No, absolutely. absolutely no. She she really strikes me as somebody that um, feeds from confidence and feeds from game after game after game after game. Okay. Um, yeah, I think she can handle it. I love the way she plays for England. I, do. I, I love the way she plays for Arsenal, but I don't see it consistent as consistently enough. Because it do, I don't know what it is. I think Jonas has got something against me because every time I turn on a, a, a women's Arsenal match, she's not even playing. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I was so excited when she came to us. I mean, we, we love it, don't we? We're, like even in the women's game, when a Man United player comes to us, we're just like, yeah, we got you. You might go Alexis, but he didn't want to go to you because he was <laughs> a terrible contract. But yeah, she came to us. She chose us over you. 
Um, and every time I turn it on at the time, I'm like, oh, this is boring. I, I'm going to have to watch the whole game to see her. Come on now. Come on. You know, and you're waiting for it. But, uh, yeah, I think she's great in the England team. And I can't I can't wait to see her absolutely tear up that tournament. Because I do believe, um, you know, the, the, the Euros is uh, where she's really going to rip it up. Yeah. Yeah, and their season kickstarts next season. Proper. Yeah, we hope so. Um, so that pretty much ties up everything on the women's game for now. Um, obviously, we'll go into the game next weekend, next week. Um, so what we'll do now is just head straight into the the men's game and take it back to Saturday evening, um, Brighton away. Um, Liam, I don't know about you, but this is always a fixture that I slightly worry about. Uh, from previous maybe sometimes it's been a bit of a sticky one hasn't it um so what were your thoughts heading heading into the game um yeah i won't i won't i won't overly worried um just for the fact that firstly we had our alumia shell kit on which we just don't lose in first of all <laughs> so that gives me that gives me a hope um but i just i just felt that I don't know. I just felt that we we had too much bright in in certain areas, and I thought we'd see the. We'd, I, I was quite comfortable that we and confident that we'd see the game through. I did think it was going to be one of them games, though. If we didn't see it through, that would be pretty much it, because I think it would have put too much pressure on the team. Um, but yeah, no, I, 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 I'm not. I'm not saying I expect us to win three nil. I, I thought I, I think I said three one, didn't I? So I got the amount of goals yeah. right, but I did. I, I, it wasn't easy. It was like it was a, it was a, it was a weird three nil for me because it, it wasn't an easy three nil until we got the second goal. Um, and there were aspects of our game which I know we're going to the Bayern Munich game on Tuesday that I think was was there to be seen in in the Brighton game, especially with players running through our midfield at times. Um, and that 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 kind of concerned me a little bit. But yeah, no, nah, I, I I was confident that we'd sit we'd see the game through. Um, and just get the three points, and that's that. That was the main thing going ahead into the Bayern Munich game was to make sure we won. Because the other thing as well, we didn't win going into the Bayern Munich game. Then, then there's a lot more pressure going into that game than there already probably was. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, well, I'm just thinking of the starting eleven. I can't yeah. remember. I was in the pub, so do forgive me if I some of my <laughs> memories isn't great on this game. But oh, here we go. Perfect. Uh, so, oh yeah. So obviously we saw. Gabriel Jesus sort of come back in again. Um, Bez, were you happy with that team and Zinchenko coming in as well? Or were you sort of thinking, where's Kivior after all his good games recently? To be honest, seeing the rotation again was nice to see that he cleverly rotated around, did what he did. I echo what Liam is saying. I was a little, a little bit nervous. But once we got the second goal, and the third goal, I was definitely very entertained. Trust I did his best celebration. He could do very, very... <laughs> Very warming to my heart because you know mm -hmm. the summer about Brighton lately as well. I have a bit of a, I won't say the word hate, but I have a bit of a grudge because I was there many years when I first came up in the league. I think I went there for a late, late kickoff. We lost two 0 the late winter that time. So I think thankfully we do the business in that place as well. You know, karma does feel right for once. <laughs> but talking about us, I definitely think yeah, I'm, I'm glad he rotated. I'm glad he gave Kiev a rest, given obviously what happened on Tuesday. I'm glad he's rotating around a bit more, you know, tinkering a bit around. Makes more sense. And good to see that that bench again looks a bit stronger. And longer may continue. And on full steam ahead now to the business end of the season, you know, next six weeks now. Yeah. Um, and Jonesy, was it was it good to you to see a couple, just some slight rotations in this game? Do you think it was necessary with, obviously, Tuesday in mind? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, they need to start on the stint. They the likes of Zinchenko and Jesus, who have been out injured. So it's good to see them back in. Like yourself, I was in the pub as well. So um, I was at a brunch beforehand, so the game's still a bit of a blur. Um, but yeah, no, it was um, it was a good game, to be fair. Under just, just obviously, we'll come on to Tuesday and that. Um, but yeah, I thought I would have seen Tommy Asu would might have started this game instead of Zinchenko. Um, but no, I was happy with the team, and obviously the result was, was great. You know, it is a boogie team for us a bogey team sorry bogey <laughs> bogey team <for> us. <laughs> I'm still thinking about Saturday night that's what it is yeah, um, yeah. 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 You, you, yeah you were great to yourself then <laughs> but yeah no, I was happy with the team and the performance was great either, but yeah a bit like Bez I don't like Brighton either so I was happy to get the freedom and I love Trossard's um, celebration as well I'll do exactly the same <laughs> you would <laughs> 
um and Amy and Abby, um, just obviously thinking about the the goals and the contributions that we've got at the moment, uh, with Saka and Kai Havertz again, uh, obviously penalty, Kai Havertz kind of a tap in, but very good uh, skill and play leading up to it. Um, <laughs> what have you made of both of their, obviously Saka we know about, but more Kai Havertz as well, and actually how influential for he is being on our team at the moment as well, and how he's basically put himself as in my eyes, not able to drop him at the moment. I love him. Yeah. I really, I, 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 I <laughs> don't want to go all like emotional about this. Okay, but I invested in myself because I'm a very positive Arsenal supporter. So anything Mikel does, even when Mikel came in, I, you know, I, I, and then we lost those three games at the start. I was still like, oh, no, it's <laughs> and he, he bought Havers. I'm like, it's fine. It's great. It will work. And now it's working. Um, I I thought his movement for the goal and it's so it's so silly because it's such like okay centre forward centre forward can do that but I think we forget sometimes that none of us had him pegged for a centre forward okay we was like and, and even Mikel didn't you know he was like I don't believe it by the way when he says he bought him as or, well, he doesn't even say that but we say that he bought him as Granite's um, replacement but it, it's not as simple as that because it's like a hybrid um left eight to move to be the second striker or, or even like a left 10 to mirror Udegaard it's it's a really warped thing and I think next season we're really going to see that development and even a new formation appear on FIFA you know 25 I think <laughs> I think that's what Mikel's aiming for is yeah. like you know innovating innovation oh, I got it. innovation <laughs> for so FIFA long. 25 on formations and stuff um but uh I, yeah I, I thought it, I think he's brilliant I think he gives us something that we've not had for uh, I can't even remember a strong tall quick Fisty. I said this last time feisty. He's feisty. Oh, he's feisty isn't he yeah. wow so um yeah I loved his goal I loved his assist as well he fought you know he fights for the ball he he wins his jewels um even if he doesn't win his jewels the like the other players know that they're to get to the second ball in this game <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, we'll move on to the next game um yeah I'm really happy he plays for the Arsenal and you could just see a total he even looks different a doesn't switch, he a massive switch in him yeah yeah, yeah it does we even said this yeah even, even looks happier and healthier yeah you know he's thriving but uh, yeah i mean he's he's really been impressive yeah. and you know so many people are like oh kai habits why are we buying kai habits but you know that's why 60 million down the drain kai habits scores again that's yeah yeah uh, and the, the best thing is he came from chelsea <laughs> he's better because chelsea ruined him yeah okay? and they ruin people Players, yeah we hate chelsea yeah so yeah, they're no, really really impressed with him and you know he's only gonna get better and better, I think. He's getting more and more confident by game by game. So yeah, he's, he's really impressed with him. But thank thank goodness for Kai Havertz. I think. Yeah. He's really done a job for us. Yeah. Yeah, exactly that. And as well to have already so far have the most goal involvement he's ever had in the Premier League. Unreal. Yeah, at this stage where he's had faced so much. Obviously, I criticised him at the beginning and I was like, what are we doing? What is he doing? He looked clueless. But now you can see he's really grown into the role. He's now settled. Um, and the money is sort of out of the question at the moment, isn't it, with what he's producing back for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I think he, I think he's game intelligent, though. Yeah. I mean, I can. You, you, we all know that Arteta is an very intelligent man. Okay, um, you know, I I couldn't sit down uh, at dinner with him at all because <laughs> he would uh, talk me out uh, off the table completely. Um, he's a very intelligent man, and he he picked ha uh, habits for yeah. a reason. And the, the same as Granite. Granite is a very intelligent footballer. Um, and there's a reason he went for Habits. And I think even from the very start, um, Habits has an intelligence. He didn't have the application necessarily to go through that, whether that's confidence or um, strength, ability, you know, whatever it was at the time. But yeah, he, um, yeah, he's proven his worth now. Yeah, and I think it shows just how good Mikel Arteta is with his players, with what he's done yeah. with Kai Habits in terms of his confidence and what he's producing now, you know, especially with, how he was playing at Chelsea. So I think, you know, we can credit the gaffer for that one. As you can tell in this house, we love his chant. 
Yeah. Okay. So this is why we're on the habits. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everyone loves Shakira. When I saw his channel, I was like, oh, well, whacker, whacker, yes. and care habits. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, we love that. <laughs> um, and just coming to you, Liam, um, for a bit of smugness from Leandro Trossard. <laughs> I mean, he, we've seen him take on, he's quite a player that loves, one of those that still wants to take on players, which nowadays is, is going out of the game, isn't it? It's more about the passing around. But to see someone actually want to run at players all the time and, and then score a goal like he did um, with his ultimate smugness at the end, what did you make of that? Yeah, well, first and foremost, I don't agree with smug behaviour, so I won't. I won't, <laughs> I, won't, I won't. I won't impress with that first and foremost. <laughs> um, but he left there. He left there on quite bad terms, didn't he? With, with, with him and the survey. So um, I wasn't. I wasn't totally surprised. I don't think he really disrespected anyone, did he? But oh, you could tell great. he was very, very smug. Shall we say that he scored that <laughs> goal? And do you know what? When you watch that goal back, and I watched it a few times, like. The way he finished that was absolute world class. Oh, like, he didn't, it, was it was naughty. It was proper naughty, weren't it? it was <laughs> and that must have been a kick in the teeth. That must have been the right kick in the teeth that deserve. He didn't need that night. Um, and and then he follows it up again. He comes on against Munich. Now, I love Trossard. I really do like Trossard, but he doesn't do it for me at. at for a start of games as, as much as he should and i don't know if that's down to him or that's down to the, the system we play and it's hard for him to um hard for him to get involved in games because that's what it seems like to me um but his impact this season off the bench is second to none and he's such a lethal weapon for evans we might we might we might get we might get a result in munich if we do get a result in munich he, he's bowed us out again with that mm -hmm. goal um, and I know there was it was a great team goal, and Jesus does some unbelievable work there. But I just think that Trossard he 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 pops up at, at, in important moments. Like he scored the equaliser at Chelsea, he scored the equaliser yeah. against Man City in the charity charity shield, didn't he? Um, he's done it time and time again off the bench, and we, I, I think we're going to need it maybe one or two more times before the end of the season. Mm, definitely. Yeah. We, we we was having this debate earlier, by yeah. the way, because we because like you you were saying about. Um, Oh, you know, he, he, he's an impact player. And we was like debating the amount of goals he's actually scored throughout the season. And it's it's 50-50. He's, he's, he's no better as an impact player than he is, but like actually when he started no, um, at all. And, <laughs> um, and and I was like, no, no, he's fine. He should start because you bring on Martinelli to replace him and you've got that beast running at you. I know we'll get on to the, the next buying game at some point. Um, but... What would you rather, a beast like Martinelli running at you where you can't catch you because you're blowing, absolutely blowing, you can't chase him at all, or or Trossard? And it's such a difficult conundrum. It's a conundrum, not even a difficult one because a conundrum is difficult anyway. But anyway, um, it's, it's a conundrum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's so debatable. I think he's a, a great impact player. I, don't think that's I love him as an impact yeah, player. Yeah, and I don't think it's a bad job role to no. have either. You know, some, some players, that is their role. Um, do yeah, you, you, don't, you don't ever want to be that guy, do you? Yeah, the yeah, only yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I get it. But I mean, if you're coming off the bench and creating an impact and doing what you did at Brighton, you know, scoring against your old club, um, you know, hats off to him for his celebration. They booed him when he came on. He left under for, like you know a bit of a cloud. Um, he came on and scored that that goal. And you know, if that was me, I'd have been all over their their crowd. Um, and so hats off to him. For that. <laughs> but yeah, I love him as an impact player. I think he comes on and makes such a difference. Um, and I think at the minute for me, that's that's his job role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I was going to say um, he he sort of has understood the assignment really. Oh no, yeah. He came in. <laughs> Though this he's guy a, is our most impactful scorer. Yeah, so he's an impact player. That's his role. Yeah, isn't but that doesn't mean that he scores just as many. Sorry, sorry. This is this is how. Yeah. <laughs> I don't say he's never going to start, but I think at the minute the impact that he's, he's creating, I don't, I don't think he creates such an impact when he starts. And um, whether or not he gets hungry on the bench, or you know, watches the play, reads, start, yeah, reads, reads the game it. a bit, maybe he needs that bit of time to sort of read the game and then come on and do what he needs to do having that bit of a learning curve while he's watching, you know, watching the game. I don't know. But for me, yeah, it's definitely, okay. It's his temporary job role. <laughs> yeah. Um, and there's, 
what what do you make of that? Do you think um he he should be the one to come off from the bench? Do you think he deserves to start sometimes over Martinelli? Or do you would you prefer Martinelli to run them ragged for 65, 70 minutes and then bring him on? I guess so, yeah, because, I mean, without adding too much spice to the conversation, I was there for his first goal, so, for the Arsenal. So, I still think, still, bring him on, you know, utilise him as he does best. There's only reason me the thank you, bye, you know, that's what I say as well. <laughs> but literally, he looks he looks the real deal. Despite, I know against City, you know, this uh, when we played them in the league a few, few weeks back, I know Arteta said, and we said it as fans, we should have passed to Martinelli, but fact is, the boy does not fail anyone. The fact he comes on, He's already in this mindset. Okay, I'm playing against my former team. For example, I'll say for the example last weekend, and he literally just like came in. You know what? I'll just score. Done. Silence them. Done. But the way on on um, Tuesday night, um, the result again wasn't technically the best for us. You know what? What happened? You know what? Without dwelling too much, but the fact is the way he came on. Jesus made a hard work to keep that ball to keep it. You know, steady and for him to wait to unleash that shot. Just goes to show that he clearly, uh, Trossard has that mindset to unleash that, you know, from out of nowhere as well. He just, I think for me, he's one of the best in the team, personally. He's the best with the ball when he hits it, and he just doesn't even hesitate. I think more of the players in the team need to land like him. Just get the ball, just shoot the first time, you know, just don't hesitate, you know. Just go for the glory. Sometimes you have to. And you can see he's benefited us the last two times. And hopefully, again, it will benefit us again, fingers crossed, on Wednesday as well. And Sunday, excuse me. I don't I let, get... I let Ben White, of course. <laughs> we'll get on to that. Blanco, come on. Benny Blanco's allowed. <laughs> He's allowed. Come on. He's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Jonesy, how good was, was it as well to see Gabriel Jesus come back into, into the, the team as well? Um, I know, obviously, we mentioned that he's playing with pain and he has had his injuries even, pretty much since the World Cup last year, isn't it? It's been on and off. Um, yeah. But, yeah, how good was it to, to see him back in and getting stuck in as well? Yeah, no, it's good. He brings a different dimension, doesn't he? As much as we love Havertz and what he, his role he can do up front, sometimes you need that flair and that magic, the quickness of the feet and the trickery to create openings. You know, we've seen him do it on the weekend. We've seen him do it the other night. Um, but he's a great player to come on, isn't it? This is, you know, we've got such a brilliant bench now. Like we say, we can bring on Trossard. We can bring on Martinelli if he doesn't play. We can bring on Jesus. We can bring on Pai. Or rather we not. But yeah, we can we can bring <laughs> on all these types of players now. Um but yeah, Trossard just remind, he reminds me of Will Todd. You know, back in the day, see when Will Todd used to come on as a super sub and get goals. Um he was like that. So hopefully hopefully he can uh, bang in one and a couple of more for us off the bench, or even if he does start um, you know, we win us that league or the Champions League. Oh both. <laughs> yeah, both together. <laughs> Um, and just finally as well, talking about the another clean sheet um, for the back four and David Raya, um, Abby and Amy, what do you, what have you been making of the the guys at the back? I mean, they're pretty pretty solid, aren't they? Um, yeah, it's time, we're think... going to take it from Brighton, aren't we? We're going to go from yeah, Brighton. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're asking me from Brighton. From Brighton, um, yeah. <laughs> best defence in the minutes. league. Yeah, best defence in the league. Um, you know, I think um, Gabrielle has just been so impressive to me alongside Saliba. But yeah. um, I think Saliba's getting a lot of credit, and we're sort of not people are talking about Gabrielle, but not as much as they should be. I think he's been solid because a few seasons back, I, I, I couldn't, st couldn't stand him because <laughs> he couldn't play a ball out from the back. You thought he was the next Mustafi. Yeah, you know? I thought he was the next Mustafi. He was so costly. Um, but he's just honed his skills and honed in on his game and he's really, really impressed me this season. And I think Saliba alongside him, you know, we've been amazing. Right, Raya, I mean, we're talking about the Brighton game, so let's not divert. But um, yeah, you know, I think they've been really solid. Um, I did worry about not having Ramsdale in goal because he's very vocal at the back and I did wonder whether that would affect affect the back line, but I think Raya's been a, you know, in He's Mikkel, been a revelation. He's been a revelation. Mikel Arteta, we trust. I mean, yeah. he made that save was it again? Was it Brian? See, so yeah, he made that that save. That was a world class save, I thought. Um, yeah. and, and, and well, it's Porto esque, isn't it? Yeah. And I think the commentator even said, "Oh, he's learned from Porto, hasn't he?" Yeah, <laughs> it, you know. So they've been really impressive. They've given me a lot of um, confidence. Um, you know, and and t teams that I would have worried about previously, I haven't worried about so much. So I wasn't worried about Brighton. I knew we'd beat Brighton. I said it'd be three 0 
Um, because I, I didn't think we'd concede. I didn't think Brighton would score and get through our, our, our back line. Um, and, and, they, and they didn't. So, yeah, I've been really, really impressed with them um, this season. Yeah, this is the girl that you want to follow for your match predictions, everybody, by the way, because um, I, 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 I can't hit, a, you know, a dartboard um, when I'm uh, two inches away from her. But this girl here is hitting score predictions. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm confident, you know, I'm confident to say we're going to beat teams 3 0, um, which I, I wouldn't have been, you know, last season. Um, and it, so it's nice because you know, you've got your bogey team Brighton, and I'm like, yeah, we're going to win 3 0. Um, and then, you know, and we do. So it, it's nice to have that confidence in your team and um, that you're going to get them results. It's it's a nice thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think uh, this, this season, this Arsenal team have made me fall in love with defending. I'm, I'm a defender. Um, in like in football and really anything I do anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a defender, and I think they've just uh, made us fall in love with the art of defending again. Um, they made it look re uh, beautiful, and what what that has done is it's transcended throughout the rest of the team. Yeah. So I noticed when we went two nil down, which is the most dangerous score apparently. <laughs> <laughs> two, two goals up and one goal up, but that's the most dangerous time of the match when you're two goals up. Um, everybody got behind that ball um, and didn't defend for their life, but they defended like a team. Um, and Brighton couldn't get through us. And Brighton are oh, known, yeah, okay, okay, not this season, but they have been known to be able to hit teams and get at teams, but they couldn't get at us because. That message of defending went through the rest of the team. Yeah, I'm happy with them. Very happy. Brilliant. Well, now, seeing as we're all itching to talk about it, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, head straight into Tuesday's fixture. Um, obviously, a couple of the, the guys here were at the game. Um, so, first of all, we'll just chat about the build up around the stadium and the pubs before. Um, I know you guys were there a couple of hours before. <laughs> Smugness level 1,000. Oh, I'm so tired. Piss level. Well, uh, Liam, what, hey. what time did you get there? What What was it like in the pub and the feeling building up to the stadium? I think he's just gone. Has he gone? No, I'm back. I'm back. I'll click the wrong button. I'll click the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, what time did I get there? About half two? Um, yeah. yeah, we got there about half two. So, yeah, we, 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 we was drinking early doors. But um, it didn't help, obviously, with the security threats that we got on the on the train all the way up. So I had, oh, yeah. um, I had Sarah message me going, well, you need to turn back around and come all the way back home. And I'm like, no, I'm not coming back home. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That did kind of put a bit of a sour straight away, didn't it? Because there was a lot of people that were, understandably are a bit weary and it wearied and worried about, like you just never know, do you? Um, so that did put a bit of a damper at the start, but um, I thought we were pretty disappointed by the club. If I'm being totally honest you on, on Tuesday night, um, when you see what all the rest of the clubs have kind of done in terms of obviously pre-match um, with, with, with all their kind of typos and banners and all that kind of stuff. Um, I thought it was really disappointing that we didn't put our hand in our pocket for this, this game. Like it's a big champions league quarterfinal game against Bayern Munich. Um, like we went bigger against Porto and is that because, the, because it was darker? Um, it seems that way to me. So I did think that was a bit disappointing. Um, if I'm being frankly honest, when I see what all the other clubs were doing, um, I think people were not sure because obviously we've been in Europe so many times. Bayern Munich are a big powerhouse. So no one that I spoke to thought it was going to go in there and blitz them off the pitch. I think it was just like, we just don't know what's going to happen tonight. I was pretty much that I thought we'd probably get a win, but it would be quite tight. Um, so, yeah, I was a bit disappointed. I'm going to be honest, I was pretty disappointed coming out of the Emirates on, on Tuesday night. Um, I just think we let ourselves down. Um, it was a, it, you know what it was, right? It was a typical Arsenal performance in a nutshell <laughs> that I've seen over the years where we get the first goal, um, we have the chance to go tune it up and then we just concede the absolute horrific howling goals that we conceded and um, like fair play to them for the first goal, but a lot of work needed to be done that should have been done better in that. And I'm sure with one of them, the goals, did I see Neuer do a flick? <laughs> he done a yeah, flick. yeah. You know? From his own goal kick, like yeah, and it beat our press, mate. It beat our press, yeah, yeah. Oh, mate. Um, um, and 
as I said, you can always guarantee three things in life, death taxes and a Harry Kane penalty at the North Bank. Oh, and, oh, yeah. Called it in a pub. It happens every single year, don't it? Harry Kane yeah. turns up, yeah, right, and he gets a penalty at the North Bank in the first half. And it's always usually around, if you notice, around the 25th minute to the half hour mark. Um, <laughs> and usually we're one it up and, and we, it ends up we're going 2 1 down at the time. And that yeah. pretty much happened as well. So, yeah, we I, I just felt that we were so dominant in that first 15 minutes mm -hmm. that you didn't really see it coming. But when I go back to the Brighton game, there was several times in that Brighton game, and I was on a watch long, and I was kept saying they're running through our midfield. They're running through our mid midfield at times, and um, pretty much that's what Leroy Sane did, didn't he, for for the um, for the goal and for well, for the penalty. And um, I just think there's still a lot of work to be done at times tactically in within the midfield. I do think personally now that I think Thomas Partey needs to be starting games in the Champions League. I I, I do think experience is massive in the Champions League. And I think him and Jesus have to start in Munich for me. Um, if we if we stand a chance of obviously going through. Um, but I also think we'll be set up better away from home. I think, do you know what? We'll know what we need to do out in Munich, where I think we got we got we got trapped again, didn't we, in this in this game, where we didn't know whether to defend or attack, and we was pretty much not doing either at times. Um, but fair play to Munich. They they got the draw. I, I weren't overly impressed with them. I think the, the players that impressed me for them was their wingers. And one of them's out now, Nabry. So he's out. So that's good news. Good news that Davis is out as well. Um, but we got to remember, they still got Kingsley Coleman's coming. Um, and they could have gone three to up before the penalty. But I'm going to leave the penalty because I'm going to leave it to you you two girls to um, kind of discuss that between you. <laughs> yeah. We'll get into that. We'll get into that in a, in a little bit. Um, but Bear's just coming to you first for obviously Saka's goal. Um a typical Saka finish, isn't it? Just curled it in, bomb corner, pretty much out of nowhere, really. Um, what did you make of it? And were you then hoping that we would, that would gain us the confidence to kick in a bit more? Well, first and foremost, the Saka goal was just so beautiful. I just saw one of my mates who was sitting in the pub, literally just told me, just echoed me on revives. The way yeah. it just went, he just took it down. I was like, yep, done, you know? But the way we conceded, the first goal, and I'll say this right now, as I said to my mate and the people I met during the week, the first one is very child, not child, sorry, excuse me, child boy, sorry, sorry school boy errors, you know, the way we got caught napping and communication breakdown really felt like, what's happening, you know, that that was not needed. Um, the customer pen, and I'll talk about it, please, if you allow me, I'm not going to talk about Hurricane it's himself, because I can talk about it, a little thing about it right now. I can make a whole page about him if you want me to. <laughs> but the, the way the penalty was given to and I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but what does Vienna not get checked anymore anymore in Champions League? Literally, he was like, the review was like, you know what? Um, I've had a ring by my attorney, you know, is an offside. <laughs> oh no, it's a penalty. I'm thinking, guys, surely give it a minute. That was like 20 seconds in. Review was like, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, done. You know, I was just thinking in the Premier League, we, we criticize the refs, which we do. I know. I do too, personally, when I get chance. And at least they checked, you know, by the panel. You get some time. But what irked me the most was, like, VR was not even, like, fully utilised. Not even the extra thing that I have in the Champions League. Um, I told the good things. We had positives to see. But just with the goals, I guess, we got caught napping twice. And sad, sad to see that, you know. We could have had a bit of a bit more... How can I say this? A bit of more... more Give a bit more, you know... Close them down, sorry, press them a bit more. I mean, we started well the first few minutes before we scored, then we scored, we, we did our thing. And it frustrates me that clearly we just scored napping at the wrong time, you know, it's just as it felt like you're at home, you know. Plus, as we know, most of the fans were not there. I, mean, I know there was some there, sadly, as I read in social media. But please, as, as I echo Liam saying as well, just, just go not to their way leg, do we do best. Just, just go for the fight now, you know. Just you do, we do best. As much as I want us to focus on league, just keep going there and just show them that we mean the business now, you know. I don't want anything else. And really, it's, it's, it's silly for me to say this, but I want to just to show them that we mean business now, you know, to keep going as we are, all this promised thing. Just, just do your best. Don't feel the pressure anymore, you know. You have the experience under the belts now, you know. Tuesday is gone, you know, oh, Sunday is now because I can see Little Village winning 2 1. 
but for me, I don't know. I don't dwell too much. But yeah, let's just hope we have a better game on Wednesday. That's what I'm hoping for. Definitely. <laughs> um, a good comment from uh, Ryan, just bringing up the the first goal. Um, Jonesy, who do you think is at fault with this? Because for me, it's between Raya and Gabrielle just as much to blame. But for some reason, I'm seeing people slating Kivior in that instance, which I think is just unrealistic. What do you think? Yeah. No, that's Slayton Kivio because it's Kivio. But no, for me, it's Raya. He's he's come out too far into him. Gabriel can't really play the ball back to him because he's so close to him. So he's tried to hoof it away and then obviously he's been picked up. But yeah, it, it just baffled me with Arteta a bit. You know, he knows Sane. He knows his game at City. You know, Sane's destroyed us times and time before when he was at City. Yeah. Um, I think he didn't plan him well. He didn't manage to, uh, Sane in the game well. You know, we the one person who probably could have marked Sane pretty well was Tommy Asu. You know, and he, he wasn't on. And then when at half time, I dropped my eight pound fifty pie when I saw Zinchenko coming on. <laughs> I, you know, everybody in that stadium would have thought, you know, for Kivio coming off, he had a bad game. You know, I'm not going to slate the boy; he's been excellent for us. But we all thought Tommy Asu would have come on, not Zinchenko. You know, and fair play, Zinchenko. OK, he did do well to make the goal and stuff like that. But I just think we were a bit naive at times. Um, we tried to attack them, you know, and, and not really, you know, just stick to what we've been good at the last couple of weeks. And that's the defending, which, you know, the girls have said down there, our defending has been outstanding. It just felt like the back four was, you know, playing for the first time together against Bayern Munich at times. It looked so lacklustre. Um but both the goals, you know, letting Sane run all the way into that box before a challenge is finally made on him. It's like, hang on a minute, where, where's the midfield? Well, you know, why ain't no one... And, and that was the key feature of Tuesday night for me. It was no one stopping these runs. You know, I think Party was the first person to do it. And that was late in the second half. He got a yeah. yellow card, a cynical yellow card, which sometimes you've got to do in these Champions League games, you know. Yeah. But both goals were definitely our, our own doing. But I mean, it didn't worry me too much other than, like Liam said, the wingers. Gnabry's out now. Davis is out. He caused the threat as well. Um, but you can tell what they were doing. They doubled up on Saka. They were kicking him all over the place. Um, but the ref was atrocious. And I know we're going to talk about the major incident a bit later, so I'll save my, my rant to them. But, yeah, it was kind of a bit of our own undoing on Tuesday night. But I'm still confident, you know, for next week. That's it. Like, there was quite a lot of outrage, wasn't there, as as mm. always. I don't really pay much attention to most people <laughs> online because you know it's going to happen. But the fact is, a few years ago, we would not be in this game at this point. No it way. would already be done and dusted. Whereas, yes, we could, we would have loved to have won. Of course, we would. We made mistakes, which are annoying. But it, we're still well in it. Um, and our away record at the moment is pretty good. So I've got confidence going into it. Um, mm. Abby and Amy, what did you think of... Um, Ben White's miss. I think there was a, a brilliant effort from him, but then also he did he then make it up by that last tackle that he did yeah. on Sane. I, I think we look. <laughs> I think we look nervy. I think if, if that was a Premier League match, Ben White would have stuck that away all day long. Mm. I think we, that we were we were a bit nervous. And I think the most disappointing thing is that you know it was two of our own errors that cost us goals. However. If we have been last season or the season before talking about the fact that we'd be in the quarterfinals against Bayern Munich, we'd all laugh at each other. So yeah. I, I can't say, I mean, yes, we, it, we've got to a stage now where Arsenal are that good that we, we do pick these performances apart. However, we, we didn't lose the game. We drew 2-2. Two -two. Yes, there were some, you know, schoolboy errors that happened and there, and there were. I don't know what Ryan was doing. It was, Ga it was Gabriel. But Gabriel. <laughs> Normally, have played that back to Raya. I think he tried to play it on the inside yeah, of Kivio. People are blaming Kivio a bit because he had his leg up when the ball came through him. But you know, it, that that was a mess, and that's really uncharacteristic of us. And that looked to me like yeah, we it were nervous. It was a mess all round. We it was a mess yeah, all round. We were nervy, but I, you know, I do think in parts of us, you know, we 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 did well, and I think I I I am so <laughs> so confident that we will beat Bayern Munich two one away. I'm really confident because I think we will look at that. I think Kivio shouldn't, Kivio shouldn't have started. I would have started Tommy Asu. Um, Arteta knew that. When do we ever see Arteta make subs at half time? He's put Kivio out there and thought he's had a good few games. Let's <laughs> bang him out. And then he's thought, oh, hold on. I, I, left back. That's, that's when yeah. Arteta makes his changes. Yeah. I've messed up here. Problem. I'm going to pull him at half time. We don't normally see Arteta do that. 
I, when Zinch Zinchenko gives me the biggest anxiety, when I saw Zinchenko come on, I got the stress ball out. I was, you know, I got my blanket ready. I was like, I'm not here for this. Like, I'm not here for this. I didn't think he did too badly. I just, he was great. Uh, he was good, but he, uh, sometimes he just gets a bit overexcited for me. But his passion's there. We'll leave it leave it at that. But, um, yeah, so I just, I thought it was a bit nervy. I thought, ben, you know, Ben White would, would have scored that. He would have scored that in the Premier League, which was, that, that was disappointing. But... All in all, I think we've got. Like, <laughs> we'll go out back, back, yeah, back round yeah, to the question. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. All in all, I think um, mm -hmm. you know. I think we'll learn from that. Um, Arteta will look at it because I do think tactically, is, you know, he's very intelligent, and we will look at it. Hopefully, he won't start Kivior. <laughs> um, right. And again, I would like to see. I mean, Partey's come on and he's been dire, but I do think Partey needs a start. I think he needs that for his confidence. I mean, we've seen Partey come in and give balls away that he'd never, never give. So I do think I'd like to see Partey start for his experience, um, and and I'd like to see Ch Tommy Asu start. And I, I really do. Not my words. Two two on the Arsenal. This this match has been really polarising in our household, by the way. Um, we are we 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 do very much like we are in sync, but I think every the the game was. There was loads of like um, separate little incidents in the game that could have changed the game. I don't know what you call that, but I'll, I'll call it an incident. Okay, and moments. we moments, moments <laughs> in the game um, that could have changed the game. So a sliding door effect, um, and that's you know like <laughs> midweek games are our most sober games as well. So those are the ones that we <laughs> remember. Yeah, this has been really polarizing for us, and I don't think we've ever had a game where we both, both of us, and my age here, I think more than anything, where we both of us have gone, nah, <laughs> <laughs> nah. You, you're watching a different game. I'm, I, I'm, I was watching a totally different game to her, um, because I, I think it's totally different. Absolutely, totally. Although I am very confident, I'm more confident going into next week's game than I was going into this week's game at home because I know how much Arteta learned from his mistake. It's almost like he has to make the mistake in order to go, Oh, I can draw against humans. Did he look? I learned from my mistake last season. There's a draw, I take it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I do. I think Saliba's inexperience showed in that, in that penalty. Um, but you know, it's meant to be a penalty because this week the word penalty has just been so traumatic. But um, <laughs> I do, I do think if you're going to look at Saliba's contact as a penalty, you know, then we have to look at the Saka situation in the same way. You know, I do think Saliba is a little bit inexperienced in that, and I, and sometimes I do think he's a little, little bit inexperienced in decision making. But we're playing by Munich; it's the quarterfinals of the Champions League. You know, you have to be perfect. And we weren't perfect no. in, in their moments. And, and that's what cost us the two goals. But yeah. it was nothing they did. We, we cost ourselves those two goals. And I think I, you can only look at that as a positive because, you know, that yes, they threatened us, but it was our own error. So if we could tidy up their errors, then two goals won't come. Yeah, that's a good point, to be fair. Um, and Liam, coming to you for, I'm not going to mention his name. Are you a bit chilly there? <laughs> I'm just looking at Liverpool 3 0 down at the moment. Absolute beautiful. <laughs> nice. The wheels are falling off. <laughs> but long may it continue. <laughs> yeah. Um, we know how that feels. So good luck, Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave them to it. <laughs> um, just thinking about, I'm not going to say his name, as I mentioned. We, obviously, he won a penalty, as always, did what he does. Oh, well, um, he shall but, not uh, be named. Why, um, what did you make of his um, typical elbow into Gabrielle's neck, basically? And the state of it? And should and should it be more if VAR was to, was there? <laughs> do you think it should have been more than a yellow as well? Yeah, <laughs> he's he's got a way of it time and time. Like he's never been sent off for it, has he? He's never ever ever been sent off for it. Um, we all know we all know back in the day when Alan Shearer what he done to Neil Lennon when he was England captain um, at the time, and he and he, and they never threw the book at him. Um, and it happened all the time in the Premier League, and we see it like season in, season out. Um, uh, what I will say is how bad he is. What my, my biggest concern at the moment is Saka. Like, he's going to get a really bad injury soon. 
He, yeah, honestly, yeah. he's going to get a really bad injury soon um, because he's not protected whatsoever. Um, and the refs in the refs in this country, I thought were that bad. But when you look across the whole of Europe as well, it stinks everywhere. It absolutely stinks everywhere. Was VAR even there on on Tuesday night? I I, 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 I don't think it was. Uh, like not once in a penalty a penalty decision that was given and a penalty decision that wasn't given did anything come up on the screen that VAR was being utilised and used. That that kind of there's some kind of sense there. Was there something wrong on Tuesday night with VAR? Yeah. Are, they, are they trying to keep keep it on the low down because yeah. we can, we can talk about the sack penalty whether it's a penalty or not. For me, it is a penalty. Um. I see why people say it's not a penalty, but at the end of the day, for me, Neuer has stuck his he's pushed he's put his leg out. He's put his leg out. We don't know in 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 quick time, yeah, right? We we it's hard for us to say in quick time, but a player of a sack of speed, when he's running at the ball that quickly, he's put the ball past the goalkeeper. What what's gonna happen next with his leg? I'd like he's de- every winger would deliberately leave their leg somewhere there. But if you don't do that. You, you're, not, you're, not, you're not doing your job well, in my opinion. You're not doing your, your job well whatsoever because every single player does that, winger does that in this, con- in this country and across Europe. They'll leave their leg there for the goalkeeper to, get, to come out. Neuer knew it was a penalty. Yeah. The way he went like that tells me, yeah, right, everything that you need to know that that's a penalty. For me, that's a penalty. Um, but there's no protection on none of these players. Um, and we 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 beat we've experienced it now for 15, 20 years. We experienced it with Eduardo. We experienced it with Aaron Ramsey. Right, there's other players. There's like Theo Walcott used to get taken. Theo Walcott's career was basically cut short for me in terms of how good he could have been because he was taken out so often. Um, and it, it's continued to happen now. And sooner or later, something's going to happen to Saka. Something's going to happen to Saka yeah. because it's every single week, and it's not. It's not just once a game either. We're talking at least three, four times a game. And I've read, I've also read on Twitter this week that apparently Saka fakes injuries. He comes off each week hobbling you know, off. Behave yourself. Absolutely behave yourself. Like, watch the game. Watch the game. The geezer has played club and country for the last three years constantly. He's been overused by both club and country. For me, Arteta has overused him at times. Um, Gareth Southgate's overused him at times. And he's getting taken out at least two, three times every week. Yeah. The bloke, the bloke's carrying injuries. He's absolutely carrying injuries. And for him, to, for him to keep d- doing what he's doing and performing the way he's performing, I think it's incredible. If I'm being totally honest, here, because I'm surprised that he's on the pitch at the moment. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fully agree. And it's, so, yeah, and it's, so- it's one of those that's like every time you see him, you go down and nothing happens. And they're especially in, in Europe, they they are quite lenient, aren't they? Whereas mm. in the Premier yeah. League, they sort of don't they don't want the control of it. Um, yeah. And so in the Champions League, they seem to just let things go and be like, yeah, whatever, like, carry on, carry on. I was surprised that Davies even got a yellow card so soon in the game, to be mm. fair, on his foul on him. And I, then I thought, oh, great, it's gonna, he's going to be more careful. But it didn't really make a difference, in my opinion, on, on his game, because he was still all over Saka, as well, obviously, some of the other players. But I don't know for you as well, the love is so much for him that every time you see him go down, you think, is this the time where he's not going to get back up yeah. again? It's kind of like in us that it's going to happen at some point, isn't it? Which is such a shame. Do you know? What, can I just quickly say? Can I just quickly say for it? But it, it, like, don't get me wrong. He's an incredible player, yeah, right. But for me, he's hundred percent targeted. Like I've seen other quality wingers that don't get half of what he gets. Even when Jaden Sancho was playing for Man United, he don't get half of what he was. Hard, not getting taken out, whatever he was. You look at other players, like look at Leroy Sane with the pace he's got. He never got taken out, did he? Like this, like. Mm-hmm. And the, uh, there's there's so many players, Cristiano Ronaldo at times. There's certain players that get targeted, and I do believe, yeah, right, we get targeted more than most because of the style of football we play. And they know they know how vital Saka is to this team at the moment, and he is important to this team. And I think the sooner we get someone who we can kind of not rotate with him, but can kind of obviously take away that pressure at times the better for me because there's been there's been times when we play him when we don't need to play like i'll give you a prime example lon's away this season that he should have never ever ever been on that plane going into france that day he should have never gone into france he goes into france he comes off injured after 15 minutes yeah. that was on our yeah. that day, unfortunately now yeah. for me in the summer and it, it was a question i was going to kind of raise back to what abby was saying earlier on about martinelli and trossard 
I'd have them both as impact players next year. I'd get a, I'd get a, a world class left winger in next year, hundred percent. But I'd get two wingers in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, like they're, they're both impact players for me. Like for me, if you have both of them on the bench, mate, honestly, coming on, they'd be absolutely yeah. brilliant in the last 20 half hour games. But for me, we we do need to get someone in who can kind of support um support um Saka moving forward. I'd go for the kid Elise at um Crystal Palace personally. I think he's even at a younger age than what Saka is, and he's got so much potential and he can play a number of positions as well. Um and when you ain't got someone like Sack where you want to rotate him. At least you've got a, a, a ready-made player there who's played in the Premier League to come in and deputise for him. Yeah. yeah. The thing is with, uh, with, with Saka is he... We all know why he gets targeted. And he he kind of like knobs everybody else off with his skill <laughs> and his technique. Okay, And it's been happening so consistently that the only thing you can do is step on his heels. It's clobbering. Yeah, it's clobbering. It's absolutely clobbering. And no one's even caring now because it's been like three seasons where Saka is playing on that wing um, that they're clobbering him. And he's not like, you know, having an injury that's keeping him out long term. So, and, and he gets you know. clobbered that much that people are even saying now that he plays for the foul, which is just a ridiculous statement. <laughs> because he gets clobbered so much, people are thinking, well, how on earth can one player get clobbered so much? Oh, he's playing for the foul. Yeah, ridiculous. You step on my heels in the club. <laughs> okay, I'm turning around to smack him because it hurts. It really hurts. It hurts. Yeah. I'm yeah. stepping on my heels. It hurts. Imagine that happening when you've got studs on the end of your shoes at the same yeah. time and you're running at what 50 miles an hour or whatever they run <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just a credit to him as well isn't it to keep getting up and cracking on with it the, the harry kane thing sorry harry kane should have been sent off assault if, if you go up to someone and do that in the street you're getting arrested it was a, it was an absolutely dirty horrible foul he didn't go up he didn't go for the ball he knew exactly where gabriel was and he should have been sent off um, yeah. and, and yeah. you know, because it's Harry Kane, he didn't get sent off. But anybody else, or anywhere else in the Premier League, in York, they're getting sent in off. In your home, if, if I have that to my wife, <laughs> <laughs> I bet social services would be at my door. Okay? <laughs> but people say, oh, Harry Kane's a really clean player. He's not. We know that. Yeah. Uh, and you can keep saying that because he's England captain. But it was, I mean, if yeah, it, it what really got under his skin, you could see that. Um, and that's why I was absolutely good. We gave him the penalty, but but it it it, it was it was it was awful. It was, it was a proper swipe. On on another note, I've heard something like is quite bad towards him as well. Um, I'm just thinking, like, is it the right time to be talking about it now? Um, apparently, he's um, kids have been involved in a car crash and they're in hospital. Oh, oh my god! So yeah, maybe we should come off that subject. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's awful. I send it. Yeah, all I love. Yeah. I've literally only just seen it in the last 10 seconds. So, yeah, hopefully, obviously, I'll, I'll read over there. They're obviously, yeah. hopefully, well and good. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, but we will go into on the flip side. There was a bit of an issue with Gabrielle um, and Rio <laughs> on, a, on a goal kick. Um, we've seen it quite often that they, they sometimes pass out to him, pass it back, and then go on from there. Um, but yeah. I think we. I don't know if we've all watched it or listened to it, but I think we can all agree that there was definitely a referee's whistle going at the time is then rolled out and his hand goes down on it. Um, Bez, what did you make of that situation? Do you think we were very lucky that VAR obviously wasn't working that night to get away with it? <laughs> it's, it's a lot to dissect what you guys just said, but for me, I guess you guys just had a day off, no? I just simply just had a day off and just went up to the pub and just said, you know what? Let them have the way. <laughs> no official... I'm sorry, but referee was, I think, had a stage fright. No, he just clearly. I'm sorry. Again, I'm not here to, to attack anyone, opinions that is, or, or a referee that's called enough referee. But for me, simply be, okay, yes, that's, that's us. Again, I'm going to be a bit biased now. But if, if, if that would be a decision against us and not to send off, sorry, I, will, I don't want to slay Harry Kane as well, if it's true, what's been going through at this present moment. <laughs> that should be in the red. And then to, to see that as well, when I saw the, the little bit, because I think I was getting a drink, my second drink when I saw that, I was like, mm, look, we go away with it, but simply be, they go away with much worse. Like when when you hit someone, as you guys say, that's violence. And 
not to get any 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 you know discipline at least so we're talking to you made me a bit sad but with our ones it's like look it's a little bit of a like i say there's a crazy moment but we go away with it so simply be i think karma comes both ways doesn't it so for me i'm glad it doesn't didn't, didn't give again didn't get given against us sadly thankfully we did our bit again you know what can i say you guys said enough from me i don't want to talk about too much given its current circumstances i guess what can i say yes yeah, that's fair enough um and yeah. jonesy anything further to add on that situation with the gabrielle situation of course you know what it makes you think doesn't it as the referee bottled dar penalty at the end because he didn't give that it just makes you wonder yeah. like you know because apparently he said that he didn't give it because it's what well, he shouldn't be giving penalties for that in the champions league game so and that's got to be in his mind apparently he said this to Tuchel, and then Obviously, you know, he's thinking, oh, hang on, I didn't give that penalty. I'm not going to give them that. It just makes you think, doesn't it? I'm not saying, obviously, there's yeah. no corruption, which there is. But, yeah, it just makes you wonder and think, is there other forces at play here and stuff like that? For me, it was a penalty. Uh, I do I think it's a penalty. Um, the telling sign for me, you know, is he tries to get up and carry on running. He doesn't go down and look for the penalty. He actually tries to carry on his movement to get the ball. But, yeah, I've I, I got questions. That referee... Um, I don't like the bloke, but when Drogba shouted at the screen after that Barcelona match, you're it's a disgrace. It makes you wonder. <laughs> yeah, they don't change, do they? <laughs> um, and just finally on this one, before we um, head into the Villa game with Bears in the second, um, just want to get your thoughts, Abby and Amy, on the the penalty situation with Saka because I know there's a bit of difference in opinion, isn't there? <laughs> Wow. Well, we've discussed this for about six hours and we've looked at every <laughs> Six hours, six right. Well, we've discussed it ever since the day, right? <laughs> Even down to like like we 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 were doing figurine descriptions of like things. we do, like do models. I'm out in the garden with a football going, babe, can I change direction? I, if I, I did this. I think the um so I originally thought it wasn't a penalty. Um <laughs> and I'll give my reasons it reasons. I thought Saka had left his leg out and he and and, and he, he could have done better to get around the keeper. However, I've done a massive flip because I've watched all the slow-mo videos and actually I, I do think it was a penalty. But I think if, if there's this much, you know, would VAR have even got involved? Because if there's this much discussion about it, it's not a clear and obvious penalty anyway. No, yeah, so would yeah. they have got involved yeah. because the ref didn't give it? But I think looking at it, if you look at Saka's body... He doesn't actually go on a forward movement like he's going to dive. He looks like he's trying to jump the keeper, which is why his leg's elevated. His body's upright and he tries to stay on his feet, but the contact from Neuer then sends him. So, you know, and, and gravity takes him. So I do now, I, I honestly didn't think it was a penalty, but now watching it, I, I definitely do. And I don't think Neuer can come out like that. His leg's still moving as Saka's moving the ball away from him. And so it is an out penalty. And actually, going back to what you said, seeing Neuer's face, he knew. He knew it was a penalty. And I think if if, if we had the Gabriel thing, which I don't think was a penalty, I don't think he heard the whistle. But if, if the ref thinks he's let, he's let that go, has he, like you said, let, let it go that end? Um, if it had been in, you know, any other moment of the game, would it have been a penalty? Probably, yeah. So it was his first Champions League game as a referee. Um, and um, I, I heard someone say earlier, every time Ali McCoy said, oh, you know, this referee's had a great game, then he'll go on to make a clanger in the last moments. And that's exactly what he did. I mean, Alice, Ali McCoy sends me west when he's, uh, when he's commentating. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I do I do actually, we, we, we've rowed a lot, not rowed, but nicely on about this. And, you know, I've actually I've actually come around. I do actually think that, that it was a, a penalty. And um, I think if you're going to, you know, give the one against Saliba for contact, then, you know, you have to give that one. If you're going to give the one against Harvey Elliott, where there was no contact, but they're, but they're saying that the movement of the player impeded his run, then the movement of Neuer impeded Saka's run. So, you know, I, I just think the whole consistency is not there and it's really frustrating. And people are saying, you know, Arsenal are banging on about VAR again, but that, that, that was a crucial moment of a game that should have been ours. Mm. So if I'm going to say no penalty, I'm saying 100% penalty, right? Yeah, it's been a spiritual journey for me <laughs> yes. throughout this whole, this, this whole thing. Yeah. It's, it's been it's been hard. Yeah, it? it's been it's been 
you know, watching the game, arguing, uh, re-watching it, ha looking at highlights, highlights, you know, bookmarking yeah. videos, yeah. like slow video, uh, uh, and have, even have some his, have of PowerPoint on why power, was a yeah, <laughs> I don't want the moments in the game. It, the game was hard for me. Um, I think I probably went through more than what um, Udegaard went through, and he worked <laughs> hard. <laughs> and, um, but in this household, that's that's what we do. We commit, don't we? We yeah, commit we to the game, and uh, we get out our PowerPoint afterwards um, <laughs> and demonstrate. I, I mean, I did demonstrate on the beach today. We had the ball, and like. I said, okay, so the dog was coming out like Neuer and I had the ball and I was like, I'm going to like move it to my left outside of my foot and I'm going to try and get past the dog. And the dog, basically, she, yeah, she, she was like, I couldn't get past the dog. The ball went past the dog, but I was like, oh, no, I'm going to hit the dog. So I had to fall over the dog. And to me, that's a penalty. I mean, one thing we can be 100% wrong is that Gabrielle was so relieved that that happened at the end of the game because it totally took all the emphasis off him. So, <laughs> <laughs> my dog's just put a paw on me and gone, get there. But yes, the, 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 I, I, I think the ref, lots of moments, I think they equaled themselves out. And I think at the end of the day, the, the game did finish 2 2 for a reason and it's all to play and for the next one. Yeah, we've just got to focus on, on them the next, the next game now. Um, Making sure Harry Kane does not score. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, I think that pretty much rounds up everything for the game. Obviously, we'll be doing a show next week before the, the next game, so we will get more into the build-up and predictions then. Um, so what we'll do now is I'll hand over to Bez. Um, we're going to look into the, obviously, Sunday game against Villa. So it's all yours, Bez. Thanks. I'll take the torch from here from you. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have a few questions and I'll keep it as concise as I can, given no pressure since I'm giving a little mid segment for tonight. Right. I have a question for you all and please answer it the best way you can. Um, what changes might you make against Villa on Sunday? Who are you going to first? <laughs> uh, sorry, from, from you to Jonesy to the girls and G, the best still loves. Um, sun, Sunday, I think, um, do you know what I was thinking about this? I think I'd probably rest Ben White on Sunday. I'd play Tommy Asu right back. I think I'd play Sinchenko left back Sunday. Um, Why are you doing this to me? Sorry? Why are you doing that to me, putting Sinchenko in? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, do you know what? Right, I think we've done this Louise out Sunday. I think that's a big miss for them Sunday, and I've I think we've pot luck with this one. Um, with Aston Villa playing tonight, um, and they played a full strength tonight, so they got to swing that round in for three days. So I think I think we've pot luck with that one. Um, I just think that we need to maybe keep. We all can't start Sunday after Tuesday, and personally, I'd give Tommy Assey some minutes Sunday at right back, um, and have Ben White on after sixty minutes. Um, and I think just give Sinchenko the, the start on Sunday. Um, I think in midfield for me, Thomas Partey, it's a tricky one, isn't it? This, this is the thing. Can Thomas Partey play twice in three days? I don't think he can. So then that makes me think, do I go Jorginho to start with Sunday? Mm. Um, because for me, I want Partey to play in Munich on Wednesday. Um, but I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. But I don't think Jorginho or Partey, personally can turn around for two games in three days. So one of them has to start defensive midfield, Declan Rice and Odegaard, obviously. And then up front Sunday, I'd go... This stuff, isn't it? You know what? Do you know what? It'll <laughs> depend. It's hard again, isn't it? It's hard again. I, I, I'd, I'd rest Saka Sunday, but it's a big game. So you probably wouldn't rest Saka. So probably I'd probably have to go Saka, Jesus and Havertz. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think no, that's good. But he might, he might decide to rest Saka and play um, Jesus on the right and Martinelli on the left. And have it. I think he plays Havertz up top, whatever happens. Havertz starts up top for us on Sunday. So it's who, who he plays on the wing. Wings. Good stuff. And John C, what, do you echo what Liam's saying? Or do you feel you want to make any changes in the midfield on the... <clears throat> Excuse me, in the in the front line a bit. Um, for me, I'd probably I'll, I'll play Ben White 
just because he's been so good on that right hand side and right back. But I'll start Tommy Asu on the left. Um, I personally, I would go with Smith Rowe, uh, Rice, and Odegaard on Sunday, and I would have um, Havertz up front with Hazus on the left, and then obviously still Saka there. But yeah, that'd be the only changes I would make. To be fair. I don't like party. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, guy would have had chance after chance. He's let us down big time. Um, no, he's no. He's a no for me. I think he's Arteta. Don't trust him anymore. Um, otherwise, we would have seen him start. I think on Tuesday. I, I'm just done with party. To be fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was going to say, how dare you? Because I love party. <laughs> Don't I've worry. been consistent all season with it, though. <laughs> I'm, I'm just silly. I'm just pulling your leg. Okay, <laughs> top two girls. What do you think? What would you make? Again, defensively, I can see already you you want Ben White to play on Sunday. Midfield, what would you think you want to change? Yeah, I, yeah, so I, I, um, I would go with Ben White. Like we're done for everything, like full stop. Okay, I need to give Ryan a bit of a breather, but I'm not going to in this game. No, I'm <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> um, so you want I, to I would up. put a Jorginho Parte midfield and then maybe bring Rice on for Parte or oh, Jorginho. I, I don't mean, know. I, I think we I need know. to. I think we need to. I need Parte needs legs. We, in we, him. we need part. We need to see Parte because he's been coming on and he's not been great. Oh. Um, and he's so, so inconsistent, isn't he? But I, I think we need to put him out to see. Yeah, we can do what. So we know we're not player. Yeah, and so we know because if we if we put him out against Bayern and he has a clanger again, again, then we're in trouble. But if we put him out and he starts solid against Villa, then we might think about playing. I mean, we don't make the decisions, but we might think about playing him for Bayern. So I, he I, needs to play his way into yeah, the team. Yeah, I would. I, he does. Yeah, he does. Yeah. And I, because I he has him. the te technique in order to play against a Bayern team. I mean, him and the experience yeah. against that. We've got we've got an athleticism, and we have technique. Yeah, but he needs to be on form, and he's not. We need to see that. Yeah, no, he's crap. At the minute. Yeah. Um, I'd also like to fit. Jesus in there as well. I'd like to give Havertz a bit of a rest. Um, but I, um, I think Martinelli needs some sharpness. You're not all in the Martinelli bag. No, at the I moment, think he's been disappointed. Yeah. Disappointing for me. Yeah. Um, you like him as an impact. I like him as an yeah. impact. He's, I think he's, he's yeah, he's disappointing. I, 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 like I think he runs himself into trouble. That's my problem with yeah. him. I don't know if his legs are too fast for him. You know I, what I mean? I think. I, and I think if we could see Jesus on the right, that would be nice. I well. just want to see Smith Rowe out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My boy Smith Rowe, I just give him a give him a chance, mate. I mean, and without Douglas Louise, I think he actually yeah. does stand a chance as well. Mm. I mean, you've got to fight against McGinn, and he's dirty. He's a dirty player, but um, <laughs> you know, if he can, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we put we put ESR in. Yeah, so we've got um, half a team attacking and um, about two people defending at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely play Tommy Astor. I'll definitely want Tommy, Tommy Astor. He needs a star. I need to see what he's like off the... And, and, off I, the and I want to I want to stand uh, Ben White's confidence or we run by putting him on the bench. So I would start Ben White. Um, and then I would... Are you not asking him? No, I'd rest him. I'd rest him if we if we went out and got got a good few goals. I'd bring him off, but I'd, I'd, I'd worry that we'd spent his confidence and his flow. Yeah. Okay. So I'm a squad player, and she is. You know, let's just go for our every game. So. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, what do you think? Any changes wise? What would you prefer to make any rotation? Anything that comes to your mind? Yeah. First of all, I'd say Tommy Asu for sure. Um, I think he deserves a bit of time as well. Uh, at the moment, but then keep the rest of the the other three the same um, because you always need a bit of stability, don't you? And yes, we had a bit of a ropey game the other day, so maybe let's just get the confidence back, the Premier League's back before we go into the game on Wednesday. Um, I do like the idea of Smith Rowe coming in. Um, I think he played very well in his last game. Um, yeah. That he, he just showed that he was ready for it, and it's not phasing him. So it would be it would be nice to maybe see him, but. Um, yeah, I was. I would keep the front three the same. Um, I think Emerson did make a good comment about how that's being on a ninth yellow, which is obviously 
a little bit ropey at this stage because yeah. <laughs> you don't want to lose him at any game. But realistically, I think he's going to pick up a yellow card before the end of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. So potentially maybe rest rest him and bring him on a little bit later in the game to maybe avoid that for now. Um, but yeah, just maybe two or three changes. Just keep it minimal and keep the momentum going, I think. Um, just a question I might throw you guys off a bit. I know it's on Tuesday myself and... Um... I would personally like Declan Rice going forward in set pieces, especially in corners, because he looks more better. I mean, nothing is um, Saka, but what do you guys think? Should we start utilising our wingers more in the set pieces position? Like have, let's say, Saka on either left or right side and one else, someone else can take the left the left position instead of him doing both sides, I think, when we saw him choose, I think he was doing both and he got almost destroyed. Mm. Um, I think so. Jones is sorry. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. I was a big fan. I'm a big fan of Rice taking the corners. Um, he seems to have that technical ability to pick out a player in the box. You know, I was badgering on about Saka always. He can't beat the first man at a corner. Um, but Rice, but then, yeah, like you say, we lose the aerial threat of Rice in there. And we also lose his ability to hit a shot like he did against United at home. You know, he got us that, that last minute goal. Um but it's difficult. You can tell they're working on something. The set piece coach is always out there. Every set piece, you know, he he's, he goes out there and Arteta steps back. But I just think at the moment, Rice seems to have the technique and the ability. He's always picking out Gabriel. And, you know, Gabriel scored so many goals from set pieces this year. Um, I think we just keep to what we're doing best at the moment and maybe look at it pre-season and start a new season. Good stuff. Liam, what do you think? Shall we start rotating around the positions with set pieces? Any exchanges would you might to make? <laughs> I think I think the, the problem is Declan Rice come in and done such a great job with him, didn't he? Um, I'm always up for kind of mi mixing things up and kind of having different options. But my concern is I was watching before Declan Rice started taking corners and free kicks and um, whatever. That we was we was sometimes having 15 now 15 corners and creating absolute nothing from it not beating the first man so personally at the at this moment of time i wouldn't change anything um like we have what we won the last eight premier league games and drawn and drawn one mm. i don't think we really need to be what, what concern ourselves too much with that at the moment we know how big we are from set pieces and I'm, i still expect us to score a few more set pieces between now and the end of the season anyway especially with big gabriel mate you know he's um always getting themselves into kind of opportunities. But I, I, won't, I won't, it's not something I look at right now. Maybe at the end of the season, once we make some transfers and all that, if there's someone we bring in. I do I do think as well, though, and I've mentioned this before, we haven't scored a free direct free kick since 2021. Oh. Yeah. And that, that, that for me, is quite bad, really. If I'm into it. Yeah. I, I'd have yeah. got on it, Burnley. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think I think definitely it'd be it would be handy if we could like I know it's not easy to just recruit someone just take set pieces, but that's something that we do need to kind of work on moving forwards and improving. Yeah, I, th I think it's a bit of a mood point, isn't it? Really, I think if we're scoring goals from someone taking a, a corner, you know. Yeah, keep it as it is, and I wouldn't trust anybody else on the ball when we're taking a free kick. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'd be nice if we had Declan Rice to take him and Declan Rice in the just score. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but I just can't do that. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't think I'm messing around with too much. I think it's something we can look at. It's a tool. Pre season, like yeah. That, so. It's a tool that we add to our bag, isn't yeah. it? It's not necessarily the bag, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the tool, sorry. <laughs> it's just the tool that we had. And if we can score a goal from it, we'll score a goal. But, um, you know, Decker's uh, corners seem to be tickers. I don't know. <laughs> tickers are tickers. <laughs> I see what you've done there. That's good. That's good. <laughs> gee, would, you, would, you, would you make any, any changes like the ladies and Liam and Jonesy? Set together? Any changes there? Um, I'm pretty much on the same page. Um, I like. Obviously, Declan, when he took his first corner, scored, we got a goal straight away. And it was something different. And I don't think the opposition at the time were expecting it. And I don't think we as fans were either. Um, we didn't really think that that was going to be part of his game or our plan. But it worked really well. Um, so I'd keep that when we can. Um, but I do think maybe Odegaard sometimes on a corner. Because, you some you know, Saka, 
as we've said, he's get kicked all game. He's always down. He's running up and back everywhere. He's always involved. And then he's going to go and take a corner, which Jonesy also said that he barely reaches the first man <laughs> most of the time. He did put a few good ones in the other day, but you can pretty much okay. guarantee where it's going to go. Um, and we need that. Obviously, we are doing pretty well from corners, so I, I guess at the moment we don't really need to change. But, yeah, I think going forward, I think we maybe someone else needs to step up and we can't always be the same person having to either take from both sides or be the one that's um, probably the most worn out then taking those opportunities. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's something to look at. But, you know, when if, if Vieira ever gets a chance, he sometimes gets in on the corners, doesn't he? So yeah. there are yeah. other options, but obviously within the starting team, I think that's something maybe to look at when we go for someone in the summer as well. Good point. Um, it might sound a bit too much from my side, and since I'm just doing this mini segment, but I just want to follow this away. What do you think in terms of defence slash goalie trying to communicate a bit more at ease to prevent you know any any silly errors that we saw against Munich? Like Liam, what do you think? Do you think so? Do you think we should like sort of having this compactness now? Shall we try to like close them together, like bring them all together? Or do you think should we start more like tell them you defend? Like as a goalkeeper, you know, track back. Do you think you make any changes in the side in the side of things when it's like a goal kick or uh, thinking about or maybe a, a throwing? You know, utilize as well that communicate more with each other. You can always improve communication, can't you? Like I think if we're being totally honest, we've been quite blessed over the last few months in terms of our defensive performances. Um, I think we come up a different level of foot winger on Tuesday night, and I think. Like, as I said, like I think with the Brighton game, there there was areas that kind of got exposed that I was kind of talking about prior to that game. So it didn't surprise me that we kind of we kind of we kind of conceded in that fashion. And if I'm being totally honest, here, when I think about it, like to any any great back four can only be as good as its shield or, or midfield. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah, Gabriel and Sleeper got caught out a bit on, on Tuesday night in certain areas, and so did Raya, but the midfield didn't support that whatsoever either, in my opinion. Um, so I think, I think my personal opinion, if we're looking at anywhere at the moment to kind of work upon it, it'd be like, look at that Brighton game and look at that um, Bayern Munich game, at what we can do to stop players running through our midfield. Do you know what I mean? Um, I do think we drop a little bit when Declan Rice comes out of the number six role to play the number eight role in terms of that defensive shield. Um, and I'm pretty on a 50-50 at the moment. What do we go for in the summer with that? Like, I think he will keep Declan as number eight, but I, I think he's a world-class number six, if I'm being totally honest. Sure. I think if we could find someone who could play that left-handed sided role who was left-footed as well, a bit bit like Granite Shackle was and get the best out of someone like Martinelli, maybe that might be the best way to go go moving forwards um, and put Declan back at number six. I think I think we do miss him there at times, but we haven't got anyone to play that number eight role at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, again, if you look at the goals we've conceded over the last couple of months, it's been minimal, but then you look at the goals we have conceded, the Aaron Ramsdale one was very avoidable. The Liverpool goal was very avoidable. When we do concede... They're big errors. Um, but I don't want to be too critical because we've defended unbelievably well over the last few months. Totally see your point. I totally, totally see that. Uh, John C., what do you think? Would you make the de defensive and the goalie Morgan communicate with each other more to ease to avoid the silly you know, schoolboy mistakes? Um, you know what? Like, as dire as the Luton game was, it was telling because you could hear Gabrielle screaming for the whole 90 minutes at the defence, you know? The, there's only so much like the TV can pick up and being in the ground, you can see it. You can see Gabriel's the leader in that back four. He's the one screaming at Saliba. He's the one screaming at the, the wingers and even at Raya as well. Um, but I, I have to agree with Liam. It's the midfield for me. You know, too many costly errors have come from people driving at us and they're coming through that midfield, you know, being not being picked up or not being taken out before they get to the back four. Um, that's just me. That's what I would do as a midfielder. I would take them out before they got there. Um, but yeah, no, to me, the midfield, we definitely need someone in there. Um, I would go for that number eight as well. I have to agree with Liam. It, you know, because Declan Rice is, you know, a lot better there. And it's hard. 
it's really hard. You can only do what you can do. There's going to be mistakes. You know, no team can play perfectly for 90 minutes. There's going to be lapses of concentration. And we just seem to forget how young them two centre-backs are, you know, especially Saliba. You know, a couple of seasons ago, he was marking Mbappe in League One in the French League. And now he's in the you know Champions League quarterfinals and in the middle of a title race. So we just got to be mindful, you know, they're still young, a young pairing and we've got them for years to come. And communication builds as time goes. So they'll be all right. Good stuff. Girls, do you think we'll make any changes in this as well? What, what Jonesy is saying regards midfield and defensive uh, side of things, plus the goalie in terms of communication and have a bit of more, as I say, this better understanding because obviously we look great at the back, but also we have that fragility sometimes which needs a bit of tweaking, shall we say? <laughs> I know that I'll, I'll kind of give you uh, narrow down okay, that. yeah. So, um, I think our, our our defensiveness comes from the start anyway. So, um, I think as long as we can work, um, from our striker all the way down to the back, then I, I think it's a nice, strong unit. I wouldn't change anything, especially in the defense. I think you can experiment enough with the attack. Um, but I don't think there's any need to um, start kind of experimenting or improving. I feel, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Sorry, she's woken up. <laughs> I think it's okay for, um, not, not okay. I think mistakes are going to happen within our back line. Um, yeah, I don't. Don't feel that. Um, I mean, I think it's big error. Big error. We say, oh, you know, there's been big errors that are catastrophic, but I think that's what it takes to get through our back four. Oh, that's Arsenal at the same time yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't, you know, unless we have a few big errors a season, it's not necessarily Arsenal, <laughs> awesome, is yeah. it? We haven't got anything to blame it on in the end, have we? Um, <laughs> I think we've been solid. Yeah. You know, I loved like what everybody's. I think we got a really great spine and. Coming from that, you know, I think Ben White has been amazing. He's been my oh, favourite player. I don't know amazing. if we're doing players, but he's been my favourite player this season. I love him. Um, and I think he's really grown into that um, that that position. And not just as an, attack, an attacking fullback, but the, like his defensive play he played against Bayern the other night was just yeah. phenomenal. I, I, I think he's amazing. And, yeah, he's um, I, I thought Zinchenko as well. I know you don't really rate him, <laughs> um, but even against Bayern, I thought his defensiveness was better than his attackingness uh, the other night. So, yeah. Sorry for having to touch myself that we've lost someone. <laughs> there we go. Sorry, right. the dog's back. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, very well. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's also one of those things that obviously Declan Rice is new to this team still. I know it's he's been there since the summer, but it's still going to take time for things to settle and all the players to get used to being with each other as well. So it's it's kind of like the naive, naivety of that and also most of them being quite young as well. Uh, obviously, you've got experience like Odegaard in there and Jesus and Havertz, but quite a lot of them are still <laughs> quite young and especially not really experienced in Champions League and those things. So I think maybe yeah. that's why that's what showed the other night, the miscommunication. Yeah. They weren't maybe as settled as they would be in the Premier League where they're more comfortable, more more used to. Um, but I don't think that's, I don't think it's a problem, really. I think we've got quite a lot of captains within the team separately. You see, yeah. as, soon as, as soon as Zinchenko came on, at half time, they had them on like the huddle, and he was the one dishing out all the communication. Yeah. Um, so I think it's I don't for once I don't think we have a problem with people yeah. stepping up and wanting to gear on. We've maybe lacked that for a few years, <laughs> um, so I think we're in a good position in that that respect. But I think it's just it's one of those things that as they form the team and whatever happens this year, it's more experience gained together. Obviously some different players weren't there last year when they went through it. So it's all part of it. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's really much of a concern. It's, it's one of those things that unfortunately happens. And at the time you think, what on earth are you doing? Like it's fundamental where, what, what was Raya doing flying out there? Um, 
but on another day it would have worked perfectly fine isn't it yeah so exactly yeah yeah just last one to summarize um, what Ryan's saying. Uh, yeah, was my last question. Um, going forwards, I mean, bear in mind the season near his end. So, will we, as fans, would we like to see maybe ESR? I'm a fan of ESR as well. Would you like to see him and Bier hopefully being utilized for the last eight games of the season and hopefully have a little part on the Wednesday game against Bayern? Like, Liam, what do you think? Would you, do you think we should utilize them both in that midfield slash a bit more attacking going forwards? Yeah, I see Ryan's comment there about ESR, but um, he hasn't been fit, has he? So, because he hasn't been fit, he hasn't, Arteta hasn't been able to really kind of trust him in that role. Um, whether that's something we can look at moving forwards, I don't know. Um, I hope, I, I love ESR to st um, stay with us for another year. I want him to keep him another year just to make sure that we make the right decision with him. But I'm not, I'm not 100% guaranteed that we will do that yet. Um, so I think it is really important that ESR does get some games and having a bit of a think about it now, but obviously thinking about Sunday, potentially he deserves to start Sunday, don't he, after his performance against Luton. So if anyone deserves to get, get into that team Sunday, it'd be him. So potentially he might get in. Um, I know Jonesy doesn't want Party to play, but Party is going to play either on Sunday or Wednesday and he knows that as well. Um, because we are going to have to mm -hmm. rotate as well. So, yeah. um, ESR. The problem, the problem I've got got with it is that um, we need we 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 need to improve next year again. Yeah. Like we need to go to the next level. So I, I just don't, I don't. I'm not sure if Arteta's got the time to risk it. Do you know what I mean? I think he goes out to someone and buys someone. If I'm being totally honest, you're either for the number six role or number eight role. I don't know what what he'll do yet. Like there's a lot of talk about Super Mendy. Um, so if he comes in, he'll be a great good player. Um, but, yeah, I'd like to see ESR play some more games between now and the end of the season. And the last thing for me as well, and I think we've all got to be quite mindful of this, look at look at the results in Europe this week. Like, all the English clubs are struggling. We're playing every three days at the moment. Um, we're playing again Saturday Sunday. We're then playing Wednesday. We're then playing mm -hmm. Saturday night again. We've got three games in six days. And we're going away to Munich and away to Wolves. He's going to have to heavily rotate. He's going to have to heavily rotate to keep them guys fit. It's going to be hard work for Arteta over the next over the next six over the next six days. Um, and it's not just him because Klopp will be in the same situation. Pep he hasn't got the strength as he used to have, has he? Pep, so he's got some good some strength, but not like he used to have. So there, there could be a lot more slip ups. That's all I'm saying because look, these players have been have been expected to, of the, the demand of games, and I, you can see it already that English clubs are struggling in Europe this week, and I think that's down to having to play midweek, weekend, and then midweek again. So, yeah, I I just think that we're going to have to rotate, and you, I would more prefer us to rotate on Sunday at home to Aston Villa than probably away at Wolves. Good point. Um, yeah. Jonesy, do you think we should start utilising gear and ESR 10 in this running and also the buying game on Wednesday? Um, maybe this weekend, yeah, with ESR. I did put him in the lineup uh, for a pick, but I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with Liam. I, I think one of them will leave in the summer. Um, I don't know which one yet. I don't know which one Arteta maybe trust the most. Um, but yeah, I don't think for Bayern Munich, I don't think you, oh, it's, it's a horrible word to say trust, isn't it? But I, I, don't, I just feel because of their fitness and, you know, their lack of contribution, this is, I don't think we can trust them in big games like Munich away. Um, and we're at the business end of the season now. So there's not really games where you can throw these players in. You, you, you know, you, we've got to rotate, but I think we've got to rotate with quality. And as much as I've, you know, this party or whatever, he is the quality midfielder in that team. Um and he has to play. He owes us, you know, he owes us big time. You know, Arteta, you know, he's been around the squad now and, you know, he's been injured most of it. Um, I hope I'm eating humble pie and he comes back into this team, you know, scores a Champions League winner in the final <laughs> and is lifting the Premier League trophy at the end. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll eat that humble pie up. Um, but yeah, I, I don't feel we can afford to play these sorts of players in big games at the moment. We have to go with what we've got and that's the Jorginho's, you know, the Odegaard's, the Rice's, the parties, players he can trust at the moment. Good shot. Um, G, what do you think? Should we start utilising these two boys in the squad, given the, I guess, midfield strength? We have so much compactness. Would you use them 
bid on Sundays, uh, Jones is saying on Wednesday, and then obviously Wolves on the Saturday coming up. <clears throat> yeah, I think, like Liam said, we have to expect there's going to be some rotation um, because then you're worrying about overusing mm. certain players and maybe causing an injury and losing them anyway. Um, whereas maybe if we change things up and if things aren't going well, they're still there to come on and make an impact. Um, but I don't know, the likes of Vieira, he underwhelms me so much because he's been given, maybe not so much this, this season, um, but he has been given opportunities where he's never really taken any of them, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, obviously Partey, I can't believe he's been a player that we've signed um, to have never had an injury and now we never see him. <laughs> <laughs> like as if that's going to happen it's always going to happen if it comes to us isn't it yeah. um we just get that kind of luck sometimes don't we where it's all painted out to be oh he's never injured he's amazing he's so reliable and then all of a sudden we haven't seen him um but yeah i mean he's got a you, you know the talent is there but i think it does take him a little while to get back into things and fair enough he's not obviously been around since october so that is a long time to have not played ball um going into these like big games towards the end of the season as well yeah but um I think stay as strong as possible as we can um one or two rotations for me too much can put it the completely opposite way um so yeah just as much as we can but to ensure the safety of the players that are there as well and if there is a problem don't just don't bother risking it <laughs> good point again I like that um do you guys think as well we should Probably put the SR in the running and then put a bit of the era. Do you trust the era to have some backbone, shall we say, to give his, you know, his best at least? Um, I, I mean, I think I'd like to, as we said, we'd like to see ESR play on Sunday. Again, you know, I don't, we don't know how much fit he is. Um, he seems to be coming out the worst of it. So I'd definitely like to see him play. I don't think Vieira is good enough for this Arsenal side and I don't think he brings anything. So, <laughs> you know, I think he's a really good player, but I don't think he brings anything to the squad. I don't think he's good enough. I don't think, I think he needs time, but we can't give him that time because, you know, things are so crucial for us. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't play Vieira, no. <laughs> um, and Partey, Partey's so hit and miss. I'd like to see Partey get some game time, like you said, on Sunday and see how he gets on and um, starting, you know, um, and, and see how he can be for us because he's not showing much coming on. Um, although he didn't do too bad against Bayern, but he didn't get long, did he? But I, yeah, I'd like to see him him start and, and factor. Um, and then I think we just have to realist, be realistic about him. If he's not going to be consistent, um, do we do we, do we need him? Plus he's like a sour cheese, okay? Like, <laughs> I love cheese. But when the cheese is not tasting great, and I'm like, and all like that, you're like, oh my god, I love cheese. Oh my god, this cheese is great. Like, oh. No, no, no. Um, I, I'm really sad about ESR and Vieira. I will into existence their magnificent, magnificent. I do, but I, I don't always see it, and it's been a long time coming. Like, uh, Vieira, you know, he's not a hell employee, so I can take him or leave him. Um, I'd like to trust Arteta with that one. But you get you get things wrong, especially expensive things wrong. Um, but ESR, I... Oh. I mean, I'd, I'd be heartbroken if, if he... I'd be, I'd, yeah, I absolutely. Know. But it, I, I, at the minute, I do not see him being good enough yeah. to push anybody else. You know, Arsenal, on where I see Saka being good enough to be able to... But he has been with them and take them. To he the has next been injured. Step. So yeah. let's see, because he was. I mean, God, he, he he got us through through some real tough times. ESR. And I think we owe him that mm. to give him the chance to come back from injury and, and, get, and get back into the squad. So, okay, but it's always always a case of proving him still. Yeah, but he's been but injured. Whatever. Yeah, okay. He's my boy. Yeah, I love yeah. ESR. I'd love to keep him there. Yeah. <laughs> Great stuff. And that's me for this segment done. Thank you very much, guys. Well done, mate. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. just just before we wrap up, I think we'll just go around the robin and uh, take a prediction for the weekend. Um, but obviously, Aston Villa, Liam, I'll go to you first. What are you thinking? Yeah, it's not going to be it's not going to be an easy game. I think there is going to be some ro rotation. Even my team's changed in the last twenty minutes <laughs> after, <laughs> after a bit of conversation. I'm, I'm going to go. Party is going to play, and I think you. After listening to Jonesy, I think he's right. I think Georgina will play Wednesday night. 
Um, so I think, do you know what? He might start the midfield at start against Luton. He could do it. He could do it. And then maybe have Declan on the bench, especially with that. I think with Douglas Louise out, it just gives yeah, us yeah. ability. It gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of rotation. Um, I'm going to go a tight two-one. I don't think it's going to be easy whatsoever. And um, well, it's Unai Emery, isn't it? So we need to get one over in him. Um, but as we've seen tonight of Unai Emery, and we see it with us, he's thrown all his eggs in the basket tonight while playing a full-strength team. Um, so he definitely, obviously, regards that that European trophy as a big, big trophy for him. Um, can they turn it around in three days? I think I think it might catch him up in the second half. Um, we're going to go 2-1. Nice. Um, Bess, what are you thinking? A lot of things. A lot of things. Again, I could listen. It won't be, it won't be easy, but I'm torn between a 2-1 and a 3-1 in between. So, kind of, uh, for me, I'll, I'll go a 3-1. It won't be easy again, but let's, let's just give him a fight. Given, as you guys say, it looks like they played a strong squad. And let's do our business and just keep going. And plus, we're home, so hopefully it gives an odd lift going forwards to the next week's business side of things as well. Yeah, nice. Jonesy, anything different? 4-0. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. nice. Like that. Confident, ready for it. <laughs> I think we'll smash them. I really do. Nice. Um, Abby, I'll come to you first. Yeah, so um, I've been really cagey with the big wins um, since um, 24 started. And I was really wrong about those. And for some reason, um, where she's normally saying, well, smash him! I'm, uh, and I've gone, well, oh, yes, well, yes. uh, This time, she's not smashing them. And I'm gone, 4 nil, A 4 nil or a 4-1. But a four, I'm going to go with a 4 nil actually. Um, because I think the defence... I, I don't care what Champions League is, okay? Defence in the Premier League is totally different. Yeah, so I think a 4-0. Yeah. Nice. Amy? I've gone 2-1 just because I You're think boring. Ho hopefully we'll try and conserve a bit of energy. <laughs> um, hopefully we'll try and conserve a bit of energy and we'll put some rotations <laughs> in. Um, so, I, yeah, I do think... I don't, I don't think it'll be a hard game, but I think it'll be 2 1. I hope it'll be 2 0. I hope the defence will be like furious from the buying game and won't yeah. let anything in, but I'm going to go 2 1. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to go for a 2 0. I think I think it'll be. Well, I always go a little bit um, soft and think, hmm, let's be realistic. But yeah, I think it'll be a little bit of a challenge to break them down at first, um, but then I think we'll comfortably get two goals and, and see it out, hopefully. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, yeah, obviously that wraps up the, the show for this evening. Been a lot of good chat um, throughout the nearly two hours we've been on. So we appreciate everyone that's been in the chat as well, putting in your predictions, questions and topics as well. So don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, but as always, I'll just say thank you to Liam, the co-host. No, thank you very much. And obviously thank you to everyone who, like you said, has been in the chat and our fabulous guests. Absolutely. And thank you, Bez, and well done on your little segment. Thank you for making me feel a bit easy with that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Josie, thanks for joining. Cheers. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Always. And Amy and Abby, thank you as well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. And yeah, we'll, of course, be back next uh, Tuesday night before we head into the next round of fixtures. So we look forward to seeing you then. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.